Hey ghouls and gals, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. Today is Monday. This is kind of unofficially a take two on my last week's reading vlog because I started one and then was sick for most of last week. So we're restarting this week um, because last week I just did not get a lot of reading done, did not do a lot of fun things, mostly just laid in bed. Um, and was sick. So, welcome to the reading vlog. This week's gonna be a lot more fun. Um, the book that I'm currently reading right now is The Tommyknockers by Stephen King. If you've watched my previous reading vlogs, I had been in the middle of the Dark Tower series. Um, however, I decided, based on some things in Wizard and Glass, that I wanted to make sure that I read all of the books that had come out before the Dark Tower series um, that I hadn't read yet in terms of Stephen King because it seemed very self-referential in different parts like there was one part where they mentioned the stand um so I just wanted to go back and read the couple of Stephen King books that I hadn't yet read um that took place not took place but were published before the Dark Tower series so um I can catch all those easter eggs so currently in the middle of the Tommyknockers I say the middle um I think I have about 75 pages left so I'm almost done with it but I'm really enjoying it it's about a writer in a small town and she finds into something strange in the ground starts digging it up um, and the whole town starts coming under this spell of telekinesis weird things start happening to each other and the town starts kind of closing in on itself um, very intriguing if you like Stephen King stories where the town is its own character which I tend to really love those stories um, I kind of think like Salem's Lot or Under the Dome this kind of gives me those vibes and I'm really enjoying it so far other than the Tommyknockers um, there are a lot of newer releases that I am looking forward to reading I'm hoping after I finish that one I'll pick one of these up today if I had to guess, it'd probably be the first one because I think there's people on hold for it after me at the library. First one is The Shards by Brent Easton Ellis, author of American Psycho. I don't know a lot about this one. Um, I think it's kind of, it says that it tracks a group of privileged Los Angeles high school friends as a serial killer strikes across the city. However, Brett Easton Ellis is the main character in this book, so I think it's kind of blending fiction and nonfiction. I'm not really sure, need to dive into it, but I am very interested in this one. Another one that I'm super interested in reading is Our Share of Night by Marina Enriquez, translated by Megan McDowell. And this is a horror about a man and his son and um, the wife's death puts them on a collision course with her demonic family. So yeah, horror, um, maybe horror, I'm not really sure. So I do wanna pick up these. You know me though, you know the drill, um, mood readers unite. Who knows what I'll pick up after the Tommyknockers, but it'll be a good time. Hopefully, I am feeling better this week, so hopefully I'll be able to get this vlog up. This morning I walked my dog and it felt like spring, which is nice yet alarming at the same time because it's February and it definitely felt like April. Although I do live in the South and I'm still not completely used to what is normal weather. Me and my partner moved here pretty recently, although time really flies because we moved here in 2021. So now it's almost been two years, which is crazy, but um, I don't know if this is typical February weather. It's kind of that thing where you're enjoying the weather, but you don't know whether you should because is this normal? Probably not, but it feels really great outside. I'm looking forward. I have today off work, so I'm gonna enjoy my time reading and just kind of relaxing, hanging out, getting ready for the week ahead. I will update you when I finish the Tommyknockers and figure out what else I am going to read, and I will talk to you all later.
Hey vlog, so quick little reading update. Um, I did finish one of the books that I started this week. I don't think I talked about it last update because mood reader but I did feature it in a couple of clips before this um, just in like some b-roll footage and that was Venko by Cherie Dimeline and it was okay I am still on the hunt for a good contemporary witch book I actually don't even know if it's something that I like at this point I feel like in theory I would love it but um, I, I keep trying them and I keep reading synopsis I'm thinking that I'm going to love them and then they just end up being very middle of the road for me not bad I want to say this was not a bad book by any means but um it definitely kind of put me in a reading slump just because I almost wish I had like bad things to say about it um, but I don't it just I read it um, it very much felt like a very long prologue in terms of like the world building and the magic building and not even world building because it was a contemporary story um, but kind of world building of like the secret society and the coven um, or Venko as it was called in there itself so I don't I don't really know I don't know if contemporary witch books are my thing unfortunately um, I'm just a couple of ones that I've tried once in future witches is not contemporary but I also tried that one and a lot of people love that one and I did not care for it I don't know I guess my witch books have to be like super magical like super fantastical um, or very very historical like I love Slewfoot um, but that was in like 1666 and then I also liked everyone knows your mother is a witch which was in 15 something so i i don't know <laughs> apparently just not contemporary witches don't really work for me um so i read it i would recommend if you love contemporary maybe i think it might be the start to a series based on the ending of it but then again i couldn't find any information on if it was getting a sequel or not so I don't know it just it wasn't a great fit for me good not great it did kind of put me not in like a reading slump but I was really nervous to pick up another book because I um, had high hopes for that one I really thought it was going to be one of my favorite books of this month since I heard that it was coming out this month um, I have started two more books since then and um, fingers crossed because I'm not very far in either of them so um, definitely a knock on wood moment here but I'm hoping that I like them a little bit better um, they're definitely intriguing me right off the bat so the first one is I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay and this one is a I want to say I don't want to say murder mystery but our main character in this is a podcaster as a child she went to a prestigious school a prestigious high school I should say it's a high school boarding school situation and one of her classmates got murdered and it's like one of those cases that everyone knows about it's a mystery it's a solved murder but there's still a lot of speculation on whether or not the person that was convicted of the crime actually did the crime or not um, internet sleeves talk about it constantly Constantly. Think like John Benet Ramsey or like Maura Murray, like just very, very sensationalized true crime stories that are about young women or girls people are still talking about. Like it's just like a household sort of crime. Um, and so she's kind of dealing with that from her past. Her school invites her back to teach as an adjunct professor um, because she does this podcast and um, is going to teach podcasting and journalism. And she goes back to her school things start popping up I guess maybe um, again I haven't gotten too much further into this than like the introduction but um, our main character returns to the school and potentially might not want to let an old solved mystery rest so very interested this feels more literary than like a thriller because it does feel like a very similar premise to some other thrillers that I've read but this again feels slower more of like a mystery not a thriller pace so I'm intrigued by this I've been getting there's been a lot of buzz about this one too so I'm intrigued about it and then the other book that I picked up that actually I have a feeling I'm really gonna love is Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez and this one I've given the synopsis for this one I believe in this vlog I'm very excited about it um, again for both of these I don't even think I've hit the 100 page mark I'm very newly into this one this one I'm on page 35 but very intriguing I can kind of tell this is one I'm going to want to take my time with because it's going to be um, like a ghost story a possession story potentially a cult story 
story. Very, very intrigued. This just feels like the kind of horror that I'm absolutely going to love. So um, yeah, these are my two current books that I'm reading. Hopefully it will kind of go a little bit better than Venko did. Again, it wasn't a bad book. It just, um, it was very much a plot driven book. I think I'll say that very plot driven um, and definitely didn't have, I'm one who likes info dumps, especially with fantasy. I don't mind info dumps and I would prefer a slower character driven story with over explanation than under explanation so yes that's my main criticism of that one so if you like contemporary witchy stories that are plot driven not character driven you might like that a whole lot better than I did um, but I'm feeling optimistic that one of these books um, might connect with me a little bit better they're both very large so I'm not sure how much time it'll take me to get through them but I am very excited to dive into it but that is really all I have for this reading update. I will talk to y'all later. vlog happy weekend so first of all it is like the middle of the afternoon right now um it's about 4 p.m you cannot tell that though because of how dark it is it's been storming pretty much all day on and off all day so um definitely some good reading weather um when i finish doing this update that's absolutely what i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna be curled up with my pup finishing a really good book because i am about 60 percent of the way through i have some questions for you i'm very much in Enjoying this one. I am enjoying the story and it's interesting because I mentioned last night that a lot of the um, kind of major plot points are ones that I've read before in mysteries or thrillers um, but this one does feel very unique so it is about our main character Bodhi. She's going back to teach for a couple weeks um, as an adjunct professor to her old high school. It was a boarding school um, and also the place where during her junior year year her roommate was brutally murdered. So when she returns back to campus um, memories start popping up um, and just to this nagging feeling that the person who was arrested for the murder of her roommate was not necessarily the person who did it um, and this is very interesting. So I said that synopsis it sounds a lot like thinking of the it girl I would compare it to closely just in terms of synopsis almost but very different very interesting and I think a large part of that our main character both is I can't tell if she's necessarily an unreliable narrator but she's definitely a narrator where you can tell that she has biases and it's affecting the way that she's looking at things and it's, that's very interesting to me because I think at least for me as a reader I start off with a lot of trust with the narrator until they start giving me reasons why I shouldn't trust them. Now um, Bodhi not only does there are a couple of things that you kind of catch throw away kind of hints that she may be hiding something maybe repressing something. Also she's very upfront about the fact that um, this took place in 1995. The murder took place in 1995. It's now I think it's like 2018 or 2019 when this book takes place. So she recognizes that it was a long time ago. Memory is not the best and certainly memories from a traumatic period of time not the best either. Also um, just with the fact that it was a primarily white school and it was a white girl that got murdered and a black man who got arrested for it and charged so she's recognizing now in hindsight there might be a lot of biases both then and now that she had about the case which is very interesting as well. I 
And then not only that, um, but we have in her own personal life, um, her and her husband are living apart. They haven't officially divorced, um, but um, there's some accusations about her husband coming out online. He is an artist and a much younger artist accuses him of basically grooming her and also accuses him during their relationship of just being kind of abusive and then also just having untoward conduct towards her. Um, and so she's dealing with that and also diving back into this case and kind of realizing also that she has a lot of prejudices also about like the different shades of um, assault or the different ways where boys will be boys was impacting her life in the 90s and how she's looking back at some memories about bullying about how the way the boys treated the girls back then and how things aren't right but it's through a different lens um, so that's really interesting those conversations are interesting it's also a fairly interesting case because you do kind of get the feeling that this guy was wrongfully convicted but there is also evidence um, and a confession which may or may not be false he says that it was a false confession and of course it was in the 90s it was police officers who didn't tape the interviews which led to the confession of this black man so there's a lot going on there very very interesting case um, so yeah I'm I, I'm very interested I kind of need to figure out although I wouldn't be surprised I could definitely see the way this is going um, it not wrapping up at the end like it not um, being wrapped up in a tidy bow you figuring out who done it because while she is an investigative character and she's investigating these things um, she's not necessarily doing like stupid things in terms of we think of protagonists and thrillers like going doing undercover things even though they're not a professional she actually also runs like a true crime podcast um, and does journalism for a living she teaches journalism as well so she is getting information in kind of a safer way than a I've seen a lot of protagonists do but I also feel like a lot of the point of this is different conversations that are being had about true crime about just um, prejudices and different ways that people hurt each other and not necessarily who did it and who's going to go to jail for it if that makes sense so very intrigued I'm gonna go get to read this and hopefully I'll finish it um, it's looking like it's gonna be a really solid read for me right now I don't anticipate anything happening within like the last 40 to 30 percent of the book that could change my mind but I'll definitely keep y'all updated and I will talk to y'all with another update later. up finishing I have some questions for you and I really enjoyed this one um yeah I feel like everything that I've said before applies I really enjoyed it the ending I felt like was a perfect mix of surprising and satisfying um I'm really glad I picked this up definitely it was not a book by like looking at the cover and the author that I initially would have picked up however that's one of the perks of working at a library especially in the department I do I get to see all the new books before I put them out and I just had seen this going around so I read the synopsis and I did um, also listen to the audiobook as well and I just ended up really enjoying this one so definitely a mystery it kind of has like some dark academia vibes I don't want to sell this off as dark academia by any stretch um, because it does kind of take place in a school but not primarily um, I mean it does but it doesn't have that like dark academia aesthetic um, but it does have a very like scholarly thriller mystery sort of aesthetic um not thriller more mystery um but it is murder mystery and I just enjoyed it so definitely glad that I gave this a shot I don't know I probably won't go back and read anything else by this author just because um they wrote The Great Believers um just other things that I've seen the synopsis of um didn't really seem like something I'd be interested in but I did like the writing style so I think this is an author where if I am interested in the premise I'll pick it up but it's not going to be like a new audio 
by author for me or anything, but I had a really fun time reading this. And then the other book that I had started around the same time as I have some questions for you, but I just wanted to focus on one at a time because they're both pretty large books. That would be Our Share of Night by Marina Enriquez and this one. I'm really enjoying. Like, I enjoyed the last book I read. This one, I felt from the first couple of pages, it had that feeling where I felt like it could be a new favorite. I feel like this could be a new favorite. I hope I'm not jinxing it, um, of especially this year, but very intrigued. It's horror, it's intergenerational. It's supernatural horror. Um, we're following a man and his son who can both see ghosts. They are trying to solve the potentially mystery of his wife's death. He thought it was an accident. It might not be an accident. They're also being chased by a cult who are members of his wife's family. So very, very, intriguing um, if you like the trope of kind of unlikable kind of gruff man character that grows on you who has like now this is his biological son um, but like is a reluctant father figure because a lot of ways I don't want to give a lot of it away but in a lot of ways our main character is very much a reluctant parental figure to his son um, because of generational family trauma and knowing that his son might have a better life if um, Juan, our main character, wasn't his dad. So if you like that trope of kind of prickly, unlikable, but unlikable main character and a very precious and precocious um, child character that have to go like kind of on a trip together, team up together. Um, I think you might like this. It's a horror setting, obviously. Um, and it goes moving back and forth in time from London in the swinging 1960s to the brutal years of Argentina's military dictatorship and its turbulent aftermath. So also definitely like a time and a place, a setting. Um, that is not one that I'm used to reading about in fiction and then also um, it's it's such a vivid setting though. So I'm finding that very intriguing as well that even though it's not a setting I've read a lot in fiction I know about the um, like the real world events and the timeline of that very vaguely. Um, it's not something we learn a lot at least I didn't learn a lot in school about but um, it's a very visual book. I don't know how else to describe it like it's it's very descriptive in like all the right ways. I'm really enjoying it and I'm not that far through it um, because I'm really taking my time and savoring this one. Um, I'm on page 93 and it's it's creepy, it's entertaining, it's engaging. Um, the characters are just, they feel so real and fleshed out. So definitely going to keep reading this and I will give probably maybe one other update in this vlog, um, but I'm hoping to finish this by the end of February. So we'll see if I can do that and I will talk to you all later with another reading update. So it is time to wrap up the vlog. I did not finish our share of night, but I'm about 40% of the way through it. So this is going to be the first book that I finish in March and I am loving it. Um, I, I know this gets thrown around in the horror community a lot. Um, and it's something that I don't love when it's applied to every single new horror author, but if you like Stephen King, if you like Stephen King's style of horror, where it's very descriptive, very character driven, there's a lot of backstory and you get to know these very flawed, very realistic characters. And it's a very slow moving, steady horror. I think you'd love this. I'm absolutely enjoying it. And I'm definitely glad that I didn't rush my way through this one um, to try and get it finished for February because I'm just having a ball reading it. And this is one where I really wanna take my time because it's gonna be one of my favorite favorite books of this year. I can already call it. I mean, I'm 40% of the way in, almost 50% honestly, um, and I am just having so much fun reading it. So wrapping up the vlog on a good note, I also did start, um, it's at work because it's my lunchtime read, um, but I started Blood Marked by Tracy Dion, um, the second book in the Legendborn series, and I am really enjoying that as well. That one has a um, plot trope or plot scenario that I don't tend 
to really like when it comes to um, not even fantasy. I don't see this in a fantasy trope a lot, but more often in like thrillers maybe. Um, there's a trope that I don't like. Uh, I don't tend to like in that one, but I think that book is doing it really well and it makes the most sense for a story um, and the way that the story is developing. So I also believe I'm about 30 to 40% of the way through that one as well. So um, I'll probably finish that not before this one because again, it's my lunch read at work and today is Friday um, and I have today off because I'm working on Saturday, but um, definitely going to have more time to finish that one. Um, I just wanted to mention that as well, that I am reading Bloodmarked and I'm really enjoying it. It's been a while since I've been that enthralled by what a fantasy so thought I would share that as well but that is going to be it for this vlog if you enjoyed it please be sure to give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below subscribe to my channel for more content from me stay safe stay spooky and I'll see y'all in the next one bye